If you wanted to calculate the circumference of the known universe, and you wanted to be precise down to the width of a hydrogen atom, how many digits of pi would you need to use? A hundred? A thousand? It might surprise you to learn that you only need 39 digits of pi. The digits are shown, and I'll grant you, 39 digits is still quite a bit. Can we encode a number of this magnitude in binary? That is what we aim to find out in this video. In order to encode extremely small or extremely large numbers, we use a system called floating point numbers. Because the level of precision in numbers, whether very small or very large numbers, can vary wildly, there are different levels of floating point numbers based on how much memory is used to store them. 16-bit floating points are called half precision. 32-bit are single precision, 64-bit are double precision, and there are others as you can see in the chart. The most common are single and double precision, so that is what we'll concentrate on here. A floating point number is what we'd call in math a rational number. You may also hear it referred to as a real number, but since we only have a finite number of bits to encode the number, irrational numbers, which are included in the set of real numbers, must be rounded and the computer is therefore storing a rational truncation of the number. But semantics aside, floating point numbers work by using scientific notation. When numbers are expressed in scientific notation, there exists three parts. The sign, positive or negative, the rational part, and we will give this a more explicit name in a moment, and of course the exponent. We don't really care about the base of the exponent, since we should know what number system we are counting in in the first place. So the base is an understood quantity. When we express a number in scientific notation, we always have a digit, 1 through 9, to the left of the decimal, and the rest of the rational part to the right. We don't use 0 to the left of the decimal, because we can add as many zeros as we want to the left, and it doesn't affect the number. And if we don't care about significant digits, we can do the same to the right of the fractional portion. We can add as many zeros as we like, and it's never going to change the number. Now let's look at coding a binary number in single precision floating point format. A single precision floating point number is made up of 32 bits. It has three explicit parts and one understood or implicit part. This is how the number is encoded. The leftmost bit is the sign bit. As always, 0 is positive and 1 is negative. The next 8 bits are the exponent. Depending on the circuitry or programming language encoding used, this can be either a signed or an unsigned integer. If unsigned, the exponent range is from 0 to 255. If signed, the exponent range is negative 128 to positive 127 and uses 2's complement. This exponent is then biased by 127, which means that 2 to the power of 127 is going to be equal to 1. In this system, negative 127, which is all zeros, and positive 128, which is all ones, are reserved for special numbers. We'll see how this all works when we do an example. The last 23 bits are what is known as the significand, the mantissa, or the fractional part of the number. The magnitude of the number stored is actually 24 bits because the implicit part that I mentioned a moment ago is the most significant bit, which in binary is always a 1. Remember how we never use a 0 as the number to the left of the decimal in scientific notation? Well, in binary, our only other choice is 1, so all numbers in binary scientific notation start with 1. So the three explicit parts of any floating point number is the sign bit, the exponent, and the significand. The one implicit part is the one to the left of the decimal point. So we have here a single precision number. Let's figure out what number this is. The sign bit is zero. This means the number is positive. We're going to assume that the exponent is a signed integer. Since it is in two's complement, we sum the place values of the ones. See if you can find this number on your own. Alright, so we add 2 to the 6th, plus 2 to the 5th, plus 2 to the 4th, plus 2 to the 3rd, plus 2 to the 2nd. The value is 124. Since this number is biased by 127, 
we subtract it from 124, getting negative 3. Let's start to put together our number in scientific notation. The number is positive, and the rational portion is going to be multiplied by 2 to the negative 3. All we have left is the rational part. We know that the leading digit is 1. That's the most significant bit and is implicit. It isn't actually coded. The fractional part is the significant, and we can see it is 0 0.01. So our binary number in scientific notation is positive 1.01 .01 times 2 to the negative third power. Try pausing the video and see if you can figure out this number in decimal form. Okay, hopefully you gave it a good shot, and we're going to take the rational part and convert it to decimal. 2 to the 0 plus 2 to the negative 2, and that makes 1.25. Now, multiply this by 2 to the negative third, and we get 0 0.15625. Alternatively, we can take 1.01 .01 and move the decimal to the left three places since we're multiplying by 2 to the negative third. This is just like multiplying by a power of 10 in decimal numbers. This will give us 0 0.00101 in binary. Converting to decimal is 2 to the negative third plus 2 to the negative fifth, which is what we already found, 0 0.15625. All right, did that seem a little rough? Well, it takes repetition, but if it makes it easier, try using this formula. Let's see if this helps. The sine bit is 0, the fractional portion is 0, 1, and the exponent in base 10 is 124. Simplifying gives us 1.01 .01 times 2 to the negative third. This is what we got before and will give us 0 0.15625 in decimal. Now let's try coding a decimal number in floating point. We started this video talking about pi, so let's code pi and round it to 3.1416. First, we need to convert this to binary. 3 is 1, 1. Remember that we can use repeated multiplication to find the binary form of 1.1416. However, the best we can do is an approximation of this number. We will use all 23 bits in the significant. I will save us some time here and just show that 3.1416 in binary is approximately this. Okay, we move the decimal over one place, and now we have a 23-bit significant. Since we move the decimal one place, we are multiplying by 2 to the 1. Our number is positive, so the sign bit is 0. The 1 to the left of the decimal is implied, so it doesn't get coded. All we have to do now is bias that exponent and convert it to binary. This time, we add 127, since we're going from binary to encoded number. 1 plus 127 is 128. 128 in binary is 1, followed by 7 zeros. All right, we have all the components. Let's plug them in. The sine bit is zero. The exponent is one, zero, 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 zero. And the significant is well, this mess. All right, this is 3.1416 in single precision floating point. Remember that I said that the exponent being all zeros or all ones are reserved numbers? So what are these numbers? To keep from getting too far off track, I will just tell you that all zeros in the exponent form a special class of numbers called subnormal or denormal numbers. I encourage you to look these up as a discussion on these is outside the purview of our lesson. An exponent that is all ones only has a few allowable values that depend on the processor being used. There are two special values of all ones and all zeros that actually are worth pointing out, however. A floating point code that is all zeros is, well, you guessed it, zero. But a code that is all zeros, but the sign bit is one is negative zero. Yeah. 
Alright, we've stepped out of the world of math and into the world of computers with that one. But negative zero is a thing, and it has its uses. But let's switch over now to the all ones exponent. If all the exponent bits are one, the sign bit is one, and the significand is all zeros, we have negative infinity. By switching the sign bit, we have positive infinity. Negative infinity, positive infinity, zero, and negative zero are really the only special codes that concern us at this level. So that's all we need to cover there. Again, I really hope you look into some of these special floating point codes as they give you a little more insight into binary scientific notation. Now, how about those 39 digits of pi needed to calculate the circumference of the visible universe to within the width of a hydrogen atom? It turns out that even using the octuple precision, we don't have enough places in the mantissa. Since most measurable things in science and nature don't need anything close to that kind of precision, it is hard to find a programming language that even has octuple precision. I think Fortran does. But anyways, there are ways of getting around this, but let me just end with this. If you get as many digits as you can out of an octuple precision floating point number for those digits of pi, you'll still be able to calculate the circumference of the visible universe to within an inch. Okay, now I know it took a while for this video to come out, but I am back in video making mode after months of moving across the country, changing careers, getting kids settled into schools and college, selling my house, which still isn't done, and my wifey poo starting a new career. So stay tuned for more digital fundamentals. We're going to get into some signed arithmetic with binary numbers, and then it's on to hexadecimal. See you next time.